Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K and in this video we will be discussing about the external features of cerebrum. So the cerebrum is the largest part of the brain consisting of two incompletely separate hemispheres with an outer grey matter and an inner white matter. So what is white matter? The core of the hemispheres consists of white matter and a group of nuclei called as the basal nuclei or basal ganglia. And the external features are composed of three parts. There are three poles, three surfaces and three borders. So it's easy to remember the external features of cerebrum consist of three poles, three surfaces and three borders. So let's look into the poles. The poles are three in number. The anterior pole is called as the frontal pole, the posterior pole is called as the occipital pole and the pointed forwards and downwards which lies between the other two poles that is between the frontal pole and the occipital pole is the temporal pole. So here we have a representation where you can clearly see the complete cerebrum which is having an anterior projection that is the frontal pole, a posterior projection that is the occipital pole and in between the frontal pole and the occipital pole you can see a pointed pole that is running downwards and forwards and that is termed as the temporal pole. Then the borders. If you take a coronal section through the hemispheres it shows three borders. They are namely the superomedial border, inferolateral border and the inframedial border. So let's have a representation of the coronal section through the cerebrum where you can clearly see the outer grey matter marked by the dotted part and the inner white matter. So today we will be just discussing about the external features. So only I haven't done any detailings here in the white matter. I haven't shown the basal ganglia and stuff that we'll be discussing in the following videos. So here you can see the three borders. The upper border here that is the supramedial border. This corner is the supramedial border. Always remember this is the coronal section. And as you run down here you can see an angle and this border is called the infralateral border. And this one over here is termed as the inframedial border. So there are three borders. The supramedial border, inferolateral border and inframedial borders. So these are the three borders. And if you take the inferior surface of uh, the cerebrum, there are two surfaces. There are tendorial surface and the orbital surface. So as the name suggests the orbital surface means the two eyes will be located here in this depression. That's why it is named as uh, the orbital surface. So the inframedial border lying near to this orbital surface that is the orbital part of inframedial border and here this is the occipital part of inframedial border. So let's discuss the surfaces now. So we have defined the borders. So the surfaces obviously they will be placed between these borders, isn't it? So the superolateral surface is lying between the superomedial and the inferolateral borders. I will be explaining with the demonstration after this. So let's repeat. The superolateral surface is between the supramedial and the inferolateral border while the medial surface is between the supramedial and the inframedial borders and the inferior surface is between inferolateral and the inframedial borders. And again the inferior surface is divided into two parts so that we will be seeing in the depiction. So here we have seen the borders, supramedial border, inferolateral border and inferomedial border. So this surface, the outer surface is termed as the superolateral surface which exists between the supramedial border 
and the infrolateral border so this is the suprolateral surface while the surface which exists between the supromedial border and the inframedial border here will be the medial surface and the surface which lies between the inframedial border and the infralateral border this one over here is the inferior surface so here you can have a superior view of the cerebrum so here you can see the cerebral hemispheres these are the two cerebral hemispheres the left one and the right one and you can see the yellow color area in the center that is where they are connected that is through the corpus callosum and uh, this is the frontal pole this is the occipital pole and the temporal pole will be directed downwards and forwards that can't be seen from the superior view so here we have the inferior surface where you can see the temporal pole here and the total of the inferior surface is again divided into two surfaces this one over here which is lying in close relation to that of the orbit or the eye here will be the two eyeballs located so only that is called as the orbital surface so the orbit will be lying directly below this area so this inferior surface this part of inferior surface which lies above the orbit is termed as the orbital surface so here you can see the orbital surface and which lies above the tendorium that is called as the tendorial surface so you will have a doubt what is tendorium so that we will be discussing in the further classes when we discuss about the meningeal nerves so there are two surfaces on the inferior surface that is the orbital surface and the tendorial surface then comes the sulci and gyri so let's have a very simple outlook about what is sulci and gyri and that will be dealt in detail in the following classes so the sulci is nothing but a series of grooves that are seen on the surface of the cerebrum so they are nothing but some depressions or grooves which are present on the surface of the cerebrum while the gyri are the intervening areas they are seen between the grooves so in between two sulci there will be a intervening area that is called as the gyri so for example here you can see there are certain lines or grooves they are called as the sulci and the area lying in between these two sulci is termed as the gyrus and according to the function and the area like they are classified into different names that we will be discussing in the following classes so just have a basic idea what are sulci and gyri the sulci is nothing but the series of grooves which are present on the surface of cerebrum and gyri are the intervening areas and the sulci are again classified into four types so just try to learn these names so the sulci are of different types commonly divided into four different types that is the limiting sulcus axial sulcus operculated sulcus and complete sulcus so these sulci and their examples will be dealt when we are discussing about the sulci and gyri in detail so this is the basic external features of the cerebrum thank you